Let's have a look at question three together. Now, I'm going to pop it on the screen just, actually it's really just for my sake, that way it's going to be easier for you to read, but this way I can refer to it. So, let's have a look at this scenario and you can see how it relates to this idea of um, statistical proportions and particularly samples, right? So, every Saturday for 20 weeks, a marketer surveys five people chosen at random. So bam, five people chosen at random, there's your sample, okay? In a suburban shopping centre, and the first question is, do you live in this suburb, okay? So they're at Towers, they're next to the escalator, they get the five people, and they, then they're like, I'm done, I'll come back next Saturday and I'll try again, okay? So you can see, let's have a look at this table, see if we can unpack it, right? Up in the top there, the X, what was that referring to earlier? What do we call those? In this case, successes, right? Because it's a binomial question. It would be a yes, right? Do you live in this suburb? Yes. Why does it go from 0 to 5? Five people were selected, so the maximum is five, and of course, at random, none of those people could be in this suburb, right? So far, so good. Not to five, what's the F stand for? Frequency. Frequency. So this is just how many people he gets or she gets each time the survey is done. Okay. Down in part A, it says copy the table to the right. Now this table here, it looks narrow as if it's only supposed to have one column here. It's meant to be exactly the same width as this one up here. And you can see how, see how in the top here, instead of having X, we've got P hat. That's this thing. That's the fraction. Now, it's not meant to be super complicated. It's going to be however many successes there were divided by, what's this again? How big the sample size is. Now, unlike in our situation with the tiles where I just asked you to grab a handful, right? The N in every one of these is going to be the same. It's going to be? Five. So really what you need to do as we do this together, let's have a go. <clears throat> We've got P hat as our top row. And so we're going to have uh, X, it's going to start off with zero, divided by N, which is, you just told me, <laughs> five. But zero divided by five is still zero, right? What's the next sample proportion? One over five. And then two over five, and so on. What's the final one? It's always one, yeah? Because that's what happens if we get all successes. No big deal. Uh, down the bottom here, you can see it's F of R. So these are the relative frequencies, relative frequencies, right? So these are just frequencies, but these relative frequencies are all out of, how many, how many times is it surveyed in total? 20 times, right? And you can go ahead and add these up and sure enough you get 20, right? So each of these is gonna be, what's well, one out of 20? And then 1 out of 20 again, 3 out of 20, you get the idea. We're going to complete this whole thing. Does that make sense? Keep going. You don't need me to do this next part. Uh, what's that? 3 out of 10? Does that check out? You happy with that? Okay. Now, this is part A. Part B. Have a think about this. Go back to what you understand of expected value. It says, calculate the mean of this. This second table, how do we do that? XPX. XPX, yeah. So we're just going to be multiplying all the way down, right? And then adding up each individual one. So can I give you a moment to go ahead and calculate that? And don't forget, what you're actually doing here is you are taking the mean, the expected value of all of your sample proportions. That's what you're actually calculating. So go ahead, I'll give you a moment to catch up. Okay, now, just real quick to cap this off, right? Let's just think about... Uh, and you can use this to help you, right? Think about what we were doing. Part C says, what does this mean? This one right here. What's it an estimate of? Well, we know we're trying to do the expected value across all of these different sample proportions. The whole idea is to get toward a whole population proportion, right? So this is like, if I do this enough times, I feel confident that this represents everybody, okay? But represents what about everybody? It's a Bernoulli trial, so I've got one, two options. What's the option that's being looked at? Yeah, chance of success, which in this case is, look back at the question, that you live in this suburb. Does that make sense? Which actually, you can see why it's 72% um, it's because you've got so many of them who are going four and five, how many times you do a sample, you're like, well, I'm getting high scores, right? So that's why uh, there's this reasonable amount of confidence that it's that many, okay?